Hey everyone, my name is YK and I'm the founder of this YouTube channel CS Dojo and I'm also a former software developer at Google. And this is my new series, Python tutorial for absolute beginners and this is my video number one, what are variables? So this series is going to be good for complete beginners who've never done any programming before as well as someone who's done some programming before, whether it's Python or any other language, but wants to learn more about Python. So in this video, I'm going to go through a number of different things. First of all, what is Python and what can you do with it? And then I'm going to explain how to install Python on your computer and then set up a development environment. We're going to use something called Jupyter Notebook throughout this series. And then I'm going to explain how to use the print function and what are variables and how to use them. And by the end of this video, if you have two variables storing different things, you'll be able to swap the content within those two variables with each other. And I'm going to put an outline of this video in the comment section below. So you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. Oh, and before we get started, if you want to make sure that you don't miss my future tutorial videos, sign up to my newsletter, which is available in the description below. So just quickly, what is Python and what can you do with it? It's one of the most popular programming languages out there and it's used at smaller companies as well as larger companies, including Google. And many universities use Python as the introductory programming language in their computer science courses. And one advantage of Python is that it's fairly easy to learn because it has fairly simple syntax. It's used for many different applications, including websites backend code, which is the code that runs on your server as opposed to the code that runs on your device, whether it's a phone or a laptop. And it's also popular for data analysis and scientific research purposes. Okay, so let's now go ahead and install Python on your computer. Usually when people develop a program using Python or any other language for that matter, they usually use something called IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. It's an environment that includes everything you need pretty much to develop a program. It has a nice text editor in which you can write your code and then the ability to run your program as well as something called a debugger, which allows you to quickly get rid of all the bugs in your program. And if you want to use an IDE to follow my series, I'd personally recommend PyCharm's community edition. So in this series, instead of using a traditional IDE, I decided to use something called Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is an environment for writing and testing your program quickly. And it's actually popular with the scientific community and for data analysis purposes. But I've decided to use Jupyter Notebook throughout this series because it's very simple and easy to install Jupyter Notebook through something called Anaconda. And it's fairly easy to use as well. So here's the way Jupyter Notebook works. There are two components to Jupyter Notebook. First of all, when you launch Jupyter Notebook on your computer, you might see a command line interface like this. This represents the Jupyter Notebook server. You can think of it sort of like the core of Jupyter Notebook, and you don't have to worry that much about how it works exactly. But just remember that if you close this window, maybe accidentally, Jupyter Notebook might stop working. So just be careful about that. Now, when you launch Jupyter on your computer, you might also see a browser window or tab showing up, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or anything else. And it'll probably be at the URL localhost column 8888 or something like that. And it'll be connected to the Jupyter Notebook server. This browser window or tab is basically the user interface for Jupyter Notebook. And you can write and execute your code here, but it's actually executed on the Jupyter Notebook server. Again, you don't have to worry that much about how it works exactly, but this is just an overview. Now to install Python and Jupyter Notebook, we're going to use something called Anaconda. Anaconda is something called a package manager, which allows you to install many programs at once. This particular package manager, Anaconda, is actually used for installing math and science libraries, but you don't have to worry about that. The only thing you need to know is that when you install Anaconda, it comes with Python and Jupyter Notebook. So you don't have to install Python or Jupyter Notebook separately on your computer. Let's now install Python and Jupyter through Anaconda. Go to anaconda.org and then click Download Anaconda. 
and select whatever platform you're using, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm using Mac here, so I'm gonna click Mac OS here. And there are two options here, Python 3 point something or Python 2 point something. Make sure to use Python 3 point something because we're going to use Python 3 instead of Python 2 throughout this course. So click download and then save this file wherever you want to save it. And once this file is downloaded, just open it and then click continue, 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 agree with everything and then select install for me only or install on a specific disk. It doesn't matter which one you choose and then click install. And this process will probably take a while for you. Once this process is done, you should see something like the installation was completed successfully. Once you see that, just click close and you're all set. To launch Jupyter, you need to launch an application called Anaconda Navigator. Just launch that in the usual way you launch any other application and then find Jupyter Notebook and click launch. Like I said before, you should see a browser tab or window opening up and it should be at the URL localhost colon 8888 or something like that. Okay, let's now create our first program. First, go to whatever the folder you wanna create your first program in. I'm going to go to desktop. And once you click it, you can see that my current location is desktop because it's shown at the top right here. Before you create your first program here, I'd personally recommend that you create a new folder. So I just went to my desktop. I clicked right click and then new folder. I'm going to call this folder Python tutorial one. And once you create that folder, you should see in the Jupyter Notebook interface two, click that and you see that the current location is Python tutorial one within desktop right here at the top. To create a new file or a new notebook file, as they say, just click new at the top right hand corner and then click Python three. So a new notebook has been created here. Change the name of this notebook from untitled to let's say, what are our variables? Click rename. And once you do that, if you go back to desktop and the folder that we just created, Python tutorial one, you'll see a new file what are variables dot ipynb. And dot ipynb is just an extension for Jupyter Notebook. Now in Jupyter Notebook, there's something called a cell. Each cell represents a set of code and the box you're looking at right now is one cell. So you can type in any Python code here. For example, print parenthesis double quotes, hello world. And when you run this cell using this button at the top, it executes all the code within the cell. So let's run this cell and you see that the string hello world is printed. So this text hello world is something called a string. It's usually enclosed by either double quotes or single quotes. And it's basically just a set of characters. So assuming that this is your first time coding in your life, I'm going to explain this line a little bit more carefully. So this says print, whatever's in the parentheses, these two parentheses, and that happens to be hello world, the string. And when you run it again, it's printed right below this cell, hello world. And the important thing to note here is that if you don't type in the exact set of characters that you see on the screen, it might not go right. So for example, if you forget to close the parentheses and run the cell, you'll get an error. And if you use, for example, curly brackets instead of regular parentheses, you also get an error. And if you forget to close the quotation marks, it's the same thing. So let's try using this print function a little bit more. In this cell that you see right here in the green box, you can type in print double quotes more string. And actually, instead of using double quotes, you can also use single quotes in Python, and then you can run this cell and the string, more string is printed. So you can use single quotes and double quotes pretty much interchangeably in Python. And then you can also print not just a string, but also a number. So you can say print parentheses three. And then when you run this cell, the number three is printed. 
Uh, you could also have multiple lines within the same cell as well. So in this cell, you can write print, let's use double quotes here, more string, and then print three. So when you run this cell, these two lines are executed one by one. So you see more string and three printed just one after another. So let's now dive into our main topic here, namely what are variables. Before I explain what are variables exactly in Python, I'm gonna show you some sample code. You can write a equals one. And what this means is that assign this value one, this number to the variable named a. You can think of it sort of like the variable a containing the value one. That's not 100% technically accurate, as I'll explain later, but that's one way to think about it. So when you run this cell, you won't see anything printed this time, but the variable a now contains the value one. Or a more technically accurate way of thinking about it is that the variable a refers to the value one. And you can check what's inside the variable a by printing the variable with print parentheses a. And note here that there are no double quotes or single quotes around this character A, and that's because A is not a string, it's a variable. And when you run this cell, you see the value A is referring to, which is one. And you can do the same thing with different variables. So you can write B equals two. So the convention here is you write B space and then equal space and two. This line says assign the value to to the variable b. And when you run this cell, again, the variable b refers to the value two now. So if you haven't, for example, seen this code, and if you wanna know what's inside the variable or what the variable refers to, you can write, just like before, print parentheses b, no single quotes or double quotes, run this cell with this button right here, and then you'll see the value b is referring to. Just like before, we can write multiple lines within a single cell right here by writing print parentheses A print parentheses B. And when you run this cell, you'll see one and two. So one is what A is referring to and two is what B is referring to. So a variable doesn't necessarily refer to a number. It could refer to a string. So if you write, for example, C equals either double quotes or single quotes, hello there. And when you run this cell, C now refers to the value or the string, hello there. And when you print C, you should see hello there printed. So I just ran this cell and the string hello there has been printed. So let's now quickly talk about what variables are in Python. When you write A equals one, in a different language, for example, C or C++, the correct way to think about it might be as a box. So you have a box A containing the value one, but in Python, this is not the accurate way to think about it. The more accurate way to think about it is that A is more like a name tag, and this can refer to any value you want. And when you say A equals one, you're saying A refers to the value one now. These two ways of thinking about it, they might not seem that different right now, but it's gonna be more important later. And in Python, you can create a new variable by writing, as we saw, b equals two. And this says the name b or the variable b now refers to the value two. And just like you saw, a variable can refer to a string as well. So if you write c equals hello there, you're saying the variable c refers to the string hello there. Once you master that basic concept, you'll be able to move on to a slightly more advanced topic. Let's say you run these lines of code and then you want to run more code. For example, D equals two. Then what happens is the variable D of course refers to the value two, which the variable B also refers to. So it's totally possible for two or more variables in Python to point to the same value in this case two. And then it's also possible for you to reassign an existing variable to another value. So if you write b equals one, after executing this line of code, b equals two, 
After this line, b refers to 2, of course, but after writing b equals 1, b refers to 1, which a also refers to. And you can even reassign an existing variable, for example b, which once referred to a number, 1 right here, to something else, for example, a string. So if you write, for example, b equals double quotes ah, the string, the variable b now refers to the string ah. So let's see how this actually works out in code. Okay, we're going to continue on the code we had earlier. Earlier we had b equals 2. So if you print b, the variable, we get the value 2. And you can reassign this variable to another value, for example, 1, by writing b equals 1. And then when you run this cell and print b again, you get 1 printed, the new value. And what happens if you try to print a variable that doesn't exist yet? So if you try to print print parentheses a, what happens? Let's run this cell and see what happens. It will actually give you an error because e doesn't exist yet. And the error says name error name e is not defined yet. So that makes sense. Let's fix that by writing e equals this is a string. And this way, the value this is a string is assigned to the variable e, and the variable e exists in the system. So if you print e with print parentheses e, and when you run this cell, you don't get the error anymore. And let's address another question you might have here. Is it possible for us to assign a variable to another one? The answer is yes. So here, if you write a equals 1, a of course refers to 1, and then c equals hello world, c refers to hello world. And what happens if you write f equals a? What happens then is this means the variable f, the name f, refers to the value a is referring to. So f refers to 1 now. And so f doesn't refer to the variable a. Instead, it refers to the value a is referring to. And this is important, for example, when you do a equals 2. If you write that, a now refers to the value 2 instead of 1, but f stays at the value 1. And this might not be the case if f was referring to the variable a. Let's take a look at another example here. If you write g equals c, the variable g will refer to whatever the value c refers to, which is hello world. And then once you write c equals hello, c will refer to the new value, hello right here. But the variable g will stay at the value hello world. OK, let's go back into the demo. Earlier in the demo, we had a equals 1, and then c equals hello there. So once we print a and c with print parentheses a and print parentheses c, we should see 1 for a and hello there for c. What happens if we write f equals a? f should now refer to whatever a refers to. So if we print f, we should see the number 1 printed. And what happens if we assign a to 2? Then the value of a should now be 2. And then the value of f should stay, as I said earlier, at 1. OK, now I'm going to give you a quick practice problem to work on in order to solidify your understanding of variables. And to do that, go back to the previous tab of Jupyter Notebook, the navigation menu. And if you already closed that tab, just open localhost colon 8888, or just relaunch Jupyter Notebook. And then go back to the same folder as before. We had Python tutorial one. Click new in the top right corner. Click Python three again. And let's rename this notebook by clicking untitled and by changing it to swapping to variables. And here's the problem. You're given two variables. Let's say v1 equals first string in double quotes, and v2 equals second string again in double quotes. 
How can you swap the values within these two variables with each other? The easiest way to solve this problem is just to write v1 equals second string and then v2 equals first string. But this might not be the best solution because if you had a much longer string, it would be kind of cumbersome to repeat these strings. And then if one of the strings changes, so if first string becomes first two strings, then you need to rewrite your code right here to match that, to write first two strings again. So ideally, you wanna be able to solve this problem without repeating the strings. Think about it for a second, and then I'm gonna show you what a good solution might look like. When you see this problem, you might say, well, it's actually pretty simple. Once we have v1 equal to first string and v2 equal to second string, so that's v1 referring to this string and v2 referring to this string, we can just write v1 equals v2 and then v2 equals v1 and we're done. But actually this solution is wrong because when we execute this line, v1 equals v2, v1 now refers to whatever v2 refers to, of course, which is second string. And then when we write v2 equals v1, v2 will now refer to what v1 refers to now, which is second string. So at the end of these lines of code, we'll have v1 and v2 both referring to second string, which is not what we want. Let's now see what a good solution might look like. I'm gonna give you a few different options here. The first option is to use two temporary variables. We're gonna call them temp1 and temp2. Temp1 will be equal to what v1 refers to, so that's first string, and then temp2 will be equal to what v2 refers to, which is, of course, second string, and then we'll just need to swap them together. So v1 will be equal to temp2, which refers to second string, so v1 will now refer to second string after this line right here, and then v2 will be equal to temp1, which is, of course, first string. So v2 will refer to first string after these lines. So this is one potential solution, but actually we don't have to use two temporary variables. Okay, here's a solution that only uses one temporary variable instead of two. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set a new temporary variable called temp to what v1 refers to. So temp will be this string right here. And after that, we'll set v1 to v2. So v1 will no longer refer to first string and then it will refer to second string instead. And at this point, note that the first string, this string is not lost yet because we have a variable pointing to that value. So after that, all you need to do is refer v2 back to whatever temp refers to, which is first string. So v2 will refer to first string after these lines of code, and then v1 will refer to second string. And this little pattern of using a single variable to switch the values of two variables is actually really important to know because it's a very common pattern to use for any programmer. Okay, let's now test that pattern with our Python code. So in the second cell, we're going to write our solution. We're gonna create a new variable called temp, which refers to whatever v1 refers to, which is first string. And then we'll set v1 to be v2 so v1 at this point is second string, and then we'll set v2 to whatever temp refers to, which is first string. So at this point, once we print v1, we should be able to print second string. We do, and then if we print v2, we should see first string, and we do. Okay, to download the files I created throughout this video, just go to csdojo.io slash python1, or if you just want to subscribe to my newsletter so that you don't miss my future tutorial videos, just go to csdojo.io slash news. And as always, let me know in the comment below what you thought of this video. I'm YK from CS Dojo, and I'll see you in the next video.